take it away. Okay, I just need to open it. Okay. All right, y'all. So it is November the 2nd. I can't believe it's already November. Like, it's so weird to even say that. <laughs> um, so we are, um, so I know, uh, hopefully, if you're watching this, then you knew that we are merging team pages um, and we're doing a Made Stronger group um, with my success partner, Amber, and we are going to kind of structure it where we at least have one, if not two guest speakers, which would include our team and then anybody else that we invite to, to co or to chat with us on our calls. Um, I have made a schedule. I'll be posting that soon, but basically the calls are on Thursdays. They're just going to be at different times. So you just have to pay close attention to that. Um, anything coming down the pipe? We were just talking about November to remember. Um, so if you haven't signed up for that, just grab a person and sign up. Basically, you just they any earnings that you make with your team, they're um, offering you a chance to donate to your um, charity of choice, which is really neat. I think that's a really awesome thing. Um, and then of course, it just helps helps us stay accountable. It's not about like inviting thousands of people. I mean, that would be amazing and awesome, but realistically it's just about staying accountable and being consistent in our business. So, um, that, and, um, Oh, I forgot to tell y'all I qualified for the new leadership conference in February. I got the email and I was like, are you kidding me? This is awesome because it was on my vision board. Like I wanted to go to one of the leadership things. So um, apparently my elite points have qualified me. So I'm like, okay, God, like slowly but surely <laughs> um, we're going to make it. And so anyways, I just wanted to tell you that out of encouragement um, that I will represent our team at the new leadership conference in February. Um, so I'm super pumped and excited about that. Um, and I know Ashley got on with the um, Cancun Success Club um, trip. And so we will be taking that trip. Um, and we're still ironing out details as far as guests. Um, I know I am because I don't think my husband's going to be able to go. And so I am more than likely going to be offering a spot to go with me as my guest um, as an incentive for someone. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and so anyway, so that trip will be, Ashley, is it in June? April. April. Oh gosh. Okay. That's, that's awesome. Cause I'll do that new leadership thing in February and then two months later, go to Cancun and then two months later go to, cause summit's in June, right? Or is it in July? Um, July. July. Yes. So man. Okay. So much fun stuff to look forward to. So anyways, okay. I won't keep this long. So, um, Ashley is, um, going to be presenting to us today, just some little info on Instagram. So here's the real deal for myself. Um, I have not logged on or been on Instagram in months. Um, because I have shifted my focus over to Facebook and running Facebook ads and learning all that. Um, but there's such a huge value in Instagram and my goal is to get back over there. But I feel like that it's a not easy. I don't like to use the word easy, but I feel like it's a very good space to attract the right kind of people and convert them to um, sales or community builders too. So that's what I wanted Ashley to kind of share a little bit about. Um, not a bunch of nitty gritty, but just like what the heck she's doing. She has been successful. She has um, hit success club every month for the last multiple, how many months total? Uh, 10. Fix and say she is almost at her year mark. I knew that. So, um, and ranked to diamond, which means she's got builders. She's got teammates. And even if they're not active builders, they're people who are willingly signing up as coaches. We're keeping them in the loop. And you guys know how this works. Eventually, a lot of them will actually grow. And so, um, what the heck are you doing, Ashley? I'm excited mm -hmm. to hear about this and take it over. Yeah. So, um, Danielle asked me to talk about, excuse the noise, <laughs> it's near, if you can't tell. Um, she so asked me to talk about Instagram, and um, as she said, there's different platforms. Some people prefer Facebook. Um, I tried Facebook, and it was getting a little bit frustrating for me, the fact that I was having to pay to boost 
valuable post and boost things about me um, in order for people to see it, even though they liked my page. Um, <laughs> it became very frustrating. So um, then it's when I kind of shifted to Instagram um, because you don't have to pay for people to see your stuff, which is awesome. Um, so I think I'll just start with this. With Instagram, it's more um, visual. Uh, and I like that because as soon as a person hits your page, you've only got like 15 seconds. And what I mean by 15 seconds is like two thumb scrolls for them to get a view of who you are and what you're about. And do I want to follow you and do I not? Versus Facebook, it takes a little bit more time. They may get on your page and may see your banner. It takes longer to get through the feed. Um, and so I found it easier for me because I'm like a get in and get out type of person um, to where if I set my page up to where it represents me, then it would be easier, easy for me to gain the people that I like because obviously if they follow me, uh, mm -hmm. they like what I post and we have similarity. Um, so first off, I'll say majority of the stuff that I do, I got it from the Beachbody Champions page. There's a post called uh, Gangster Rap Connections by, I think her name is Haley. Pink hair, really cute, really funky. Um, she gives a lot of great tips. And also in the comment section, she posts a video from her upline who taught her this as well. So all this stuff is being duplicated, but obviously it works. Um, so on Instagram, the first thing I've already chatted with Adrian about this. So anyway, the first thing I, I tell people is that the bio needs to have um, two to three, four things uh, of interest. So if you are a toddler mom, if you are a dog lover, if you're a nurse, if you're a Jesus girl, whatever, it's got to give like, you know, four, three to five um quick topics about yourself and in the bio um, and it should be clean it should not be written out in a paragraph like i said instagram is quick so as soon as they get to your page the first thing they're going to see at the top is that bio so they for example i'll use me i'm a nurse so at the very top i have rn the next thing i have is fur mama the next thing i have is something about jesus i mean it's very particular to who i am clothes fashion whatever so in order to make it clean, usually you have to type what you want in the notes section of your phone and then copy and paste it into the bio section of your Instagram um, bio. That way it gives it, it gives it more space. If not, Instagram will combine it and it'll make it look like a paragraph. Yes. Um, so that's the first thing. And then the next thing, um, I will say that one more thing about the bio is that I have a, um, a Google form. Well, it's a Wufu form. Um, and I have that link in my bio because you'll be surprised the amount of people who have been following you, but they don't have enough balls to reach out to you on Messenger. And so they'll fill out the Wufu form because um, it's kind of an underway cover way of saying, hey, I'm interested, but I'm really scared to reach out to you. So I do recommend having some type of form. Um, so that people can click on there and they can leave their email address, how they wish to be contacted, what they're interested in. So I have different options as far as, do you want the 30 day challenge group? Do you, are you interested in coaching? Like, what is it that you want? Okay. So that it got to my email um, and I can respond to them um, based off of their needs. So I do recommend having some type of um, link so that people that you just haven't made, made it to reaching out to, um, but are ready can click on that and um, reach out to you as well. Okay. So bio brief, four to five things about yourself in a Wufu form or some type of info form, and that's it. Um, as far as what I post, that again has to do with a list of max five things that you really are interested in and you love. Um, so. As soon as you go to my page, usually you'll see Jackson on there. He's quite the star of my page, a uh, boxer. Um, you'll see some nurse memes. You'll see uh, fashion stuff um, because, like I said, within those first two scrolls, that's all people are going to give you to figure out what you're about. Um, so where I get my people from. Now, I know that Instagram is all about hashtags. I get it. Hashtags are amazing. But if you've ever been on Instagram, has anyone actually clicked on the hashtag they make and search it and see who else is posting that hashtag? No. No. 
pe people just use hashtags to be funny most of the time or to gain followers. So if you think that you're going to be getting followers off of the 50 million hashtags that you use, you're wrong. You're still going to have to add people and find your niche, find your people. So let's say you love, I'll just go back to nursing because nursing is majority of my life. I go to Facebook, Facebook, go back, Facebook, they have, Chanel has said, go to groups that, um, that, that are like you. So like stay at home mom groups or um, crafting groups, whatever. Instagram is the same way. You just have to go to pages that you like. So for me, um, nursing. There's a website or a page called Snarky Nurses. It has funny little memes that <laughs> that kind of describe how crappy nursing is and smart comments. And so what I do is I will go to that page because I know most of the time there's either nurses or nursing students that are following that page because they get that that's me. So you go to that page, you click on their followers, and you have thousands of people that you can scroll through and look at their pictures and say, oh, she looks like me, or oh, you know, you can follow those people because you know they're a nurse. Mm. You know they get your humor because they're following that page. Mm -hmm. It's an easy way to find people that look like you, um, and when you click on their picture, you'll see their bio. They may have a quote that you love, and that's how you find people that are like you. Because what happens is once you follow them, they'll say, oh, uh, Ashley just followed me. Let me go to her page. She's going to click on my page and she's going to see, bam, right in the bio that I'm a nurse. Follow back. Or bam, she posts memes about nursing. Follow back. So the point of, I'll give you another example. I'm a boxer mom. And so I follow a lot of different like boxer pages that post stuff about cute, post cute boxer puppy stuff or whatever the case may be. So again, go find a popular page with like thousands of followers that is similar to your niche of people. Um, so I know that boxer lovers are going to be following that page. So you'll click on the follower section and you have thousands of people to look through. And what I'll do is I'll find young boxer mamas that are following that page because as soon as they see that I followed them, they're going to click on my page and they're going to say, oh, she's got a boxer too, follow back. So you have easily collected people that are like you. Okay. Um, so that's why it's very important to make a list and figure out who you are. Because if you try to use just hashtags and post weight loss journey or fit fam or, you know, some of those generalized stuff, you're not going to get the people that you want to get. Okay. Um, so that is the main thing because it's, it's very visual. Um, your page has to speak to who you're about. Um, I know a lot of coaches or some coaches like to use the same filter for all of their photos, all of their graphics. Um, I don't because I like the different filters. I like to kind of change it up a little bit. So what I've learned to make my page look more unified is I'll use the same font for something, whether you do a quote in the morning, um, um, whether you are putting a quote on a picture that you posted, as long as you have one similar thing, it works. So for me, it's black writing with a white background. And I used to do the same font, but now I like to change up the font. But because it has that white background, it kind of gives my page some type of uniformity to it. So that way, my page is not all black and white photos all the time, just so it can look good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the one thing I will say about Instagram is you can follow 50 million people, but if you're not commenting on their stuff, if you're not going to their page and liking their stuff, and not just one time, but over a period of time, they're not, they, they won't find interest in you. And what I've seen is a lot of people are really great about adding friends and they have like 5,000 5, followers, but they're only getting like two likes. And that's because usually the person that 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 page they're not liking other people's stuff they're not interacting with their followers they're not commenting on their stuff so if you don't care they don't care yeah. so usually i will take i try to do it at the end of the day but at least every other day take 10 15 minutes and just scroll and like and comment and interact with these people because once they see that you're focusing on them they'll focus on you and if your page is public, then it's if they like your stuff, it's going to show up in the feed and more people like you are going to like your page.
So it pays to be interactive uh, with your customers, just like with Facebook. Um, the next thing is hashtags. Um, as far as hashtags go, the one thing I was telling, I think it was Adrian the other day is, hashtags are great, but don't put all 30, 30 of your hashtags into your post. Only use like the first couple, first two or three, and the rest you're gonna put in the comments section below so that people don't get distracted by the 50 million hashtags that you're using to get people. Yeah. Um, and then hashtags should be, you want unique people, you have to use unique hashtags. So if you're doing hashtag fitness, hashtag weights, hashtag fit fam, um, you're going to get a lot of like um, fitness people, uh, personal trainers, people that are already out for likes. So it's very important that you kind of find little hashtags that are unique to, to you. Like I like my dog is my kid because I want people that just have dogs as their kids. They, they can relate of how spoiled we make them. Um, what's another one? Um, when we were doing uh, fantasy football, I use the hashtag uh, girls like girls watch football too. And it has a smaller amount of people that use it, but that's what you want. You want people that are unique to who you are. Um, I know, I think it was Jen Richardson who said that, that what she does is she goes to Google and she'll Google popular hashtags for toddler mom. Um, and she says when she does that, it'll give some websites will pop up a list of popular hashtags for toddler moms. Oh, wow. So that way you can use those in your posts. Okay. So hashtags, I change them up. I use the notes section of my phone a lot. So I have a note subject for nursing and I have popular hashtags for nurses. And then I have one for maybe boxers. And just depending on what type of post it is, um, is what I will use in the comment section. Cause you only get like 30, 30 hashtags uh, per picture. Okay. But the main thing is not to get caught up on those hashtags because at the end of the day, you mo you in order to get a good following, people that are going to learn about you, you have to go find those people. And when they when they see that you follow them, when they click on your page, they need to see some type of interest based off of those pictures. Um, well, if you're a marathon runner, you better have some running pictures. If you're a toddler mom, you better have a baby on there. Um, if it's all fitness, they're not, they probably won't follow back because they're not interested in weight loss right now. They're just a nurse doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it has to have something that relates to who you're trying to follow. And that's, that's really what I've been doing. I, I still do the same um, steps as far as Facebook goes, like as far as adding people. Mm -hmm. I just go to a particular page that I like, whether it be a nurse related page and I'll find 10 people or 20 people, whatever. And I just follow them and move on. Um, and then once they follow back is when I reach out to them, just like Facebook, just like when people accept your, your friend request, you say, Hey, thanks so much for um, following back. So appreciated. And then you relate, you talk to them about something that's on their page. So, um, Usually I've been, I've been following a lot of nurses. So um, I'll say, you know, hey, thanks so much for following back. So, so appreciated. I see you're a nurse as well. What area of nursing are you in? Because you always want to end it with a question. You want them to answer back. You want them to start a conversation. And usually because it's something that has nothing to do with selling, they will respond and they'll talk to me. And then we'll talk about how crappy nursing is because most of the time it's experienced people. So we talk about patient load and we talk about not getting enough sleep. It always tends to go where I want it to go. And this, so then after just a couple back and forth with them, just like Facebook, I slip it on in and I say, Hey, I don't know if you'd be interested, but I run this group for nurses because nurses understand the struggle <laughs> is real when you're working. We, we do this, this, and this, would you be interested? Can I send you more information? Question mark. Always ended with a question. So they are forced to talk back. Don't say, let me know if you're interested because half the time they'll forget and they won't. Mm -hmm. So you have to say, can I send you the info? And most of the time people will say yes, whether they're interested or not, that's okay because they may not be interested, but by the time they read your email, they will be because they like what you have to offer. So that's why I usually always end it with, can I send you the info? Um, and that's really worked for me. 
So whenever you don't know exactly what, how to transition into inviting them, oh, by the way, because it makes it sound like you just thought about it and it's not forcing them. Um, and that's why I like, I don't know if you'd be interested, but I know some people say that's not um, competent in what you're about, but I think it's just non-aggressive mm -hmm. and it gives people the right to say, nah, not right now. So that's why it's a great, great transition piece. It's what's worked for me um, as far as getting people to at least read the email that I'm sending them. Um, what else about Instagram? I feel like that's it. Any questions? I know that was short and sweet and brief, but it, I mean, it, it really is so much like Facebook already. Um, it's just a little bit different as far as how you find your people. Yeah, how you, um, that was perfect. Um, I mean, I loved it. There's a ton, ton of really, really good stuff on there. And you're right. Like it is very similar to Facebook. Um, hey, Jerrica, how are you? Uh, sorry, I was doing church stuff. <laughs> no, girl, you're totally fine. I was like, you know what? If you are not, oh, sorry, that was a Lego. Um, if you're not busy, you could at least see a couple of the other ladies. Um, but on Thursdays, we uh, try to host, well, I usually do for, for, I don't know, at least two years now, basically every single week, I would ho I've been hosting a team call, and I asked Ashley to talk today about Instagram, so um, mainly because it's been a really successful platform for her to build new relationships, and I have not been on Instagram. I have one, and I get requests and followers. I get followers all the time. I'll get a notification, and I'll, every once in a while, I'll have people tag me, and I'm like, I haven't posted in like month, like a year, I feel like. Um, but it's a really, I actually love it. Um, Instagram. And so I didn't move away from it because I didn't like it, but because I really wanted to try to tackle my Facebook, like my business page, um, and just learn how to grow followers and connect there. But I will tell you, it has been a huge struggle. Um, and I feel like regardless, it's a struggle. So, um, I mainly like with Jerrica, like, coaching, there's always a struggle. <laughs> to me, it's just like any other thing that we do. Like I feel like with, um, when I was a nurse, like there was always a struggle with something, with caring for the patients, with sleep, with social life, with whatever. And the nurse practitioner, there was a whole nother level of struggle. And I honestly, I have really only been full-time coaching for like two and a half years, not quite two and a half years, but I've been involved for seven because it's just amazing. Like the community is so awesome. So it was natural for me to just be involved. But what I have learned is that I don't think we're ever going to feel like, yes, I got it. Now I can coast. Like, I don't feel like there's ever, ever going to be a time that that's going to happen. Um, but really and truly we're all learning. And even one of the most humbling things that has really kind of sucked me in, sucked me into this community, Beachbody as a whole, was getting on to calls like from Janelle. And I know that Ashley will know who I'm talking about, Janelle Summers. She's actually Shalene Johnson's sister. And she is um, one of the founding coaches and extreme, like I'm talking multi, multi, multi million dollar successful. But she hosts a team call every week and she is the most humble person I, I feel like you will ever meet. Um, and she learns just like we learn. So she's been super successful, but she gets on these calls and it's, they're hosted by a new person every week, someone on her team, someone on other teams. And the reason she does that is because she feels like, okay, yes, maybe I have been successful because the Lord has been good and brought me some amazing rock stars, but I don't know it all and I will never know it all and I'll not pretend to know it all. Um, and so that's what's really, really awesome. Um, and that's what I'm trying to duplicate here with us is that just to know that I'm not, I'm not an expert on Instagram and I haven't even been using it, but Ashley, she has rank advance. She's got adding new team members. She's hitting her, um, at helping at least three people every month. And it's all coming from Instagram people. She doesn't even know. And she's building a friendship with them. At, like, and to me, that's mind blowing. That's just really really cool. And so, um, that's why I wanted her to talk a little bit about it. And so, um, we, this, all the calls are recorded. So I will, once we get done, I'll record it. And what I'm going to do, and I was going to ask for y'all's opinion. Um, you know, there's so many calls, like if you go to my YouTube page, there's like 
hundreds <laughs> um, because we've been doing them for so long. Um, I think there's a way to archive them for if you go to the YouTube page on the computer, there should be a way that I can archive the fit team calls. Um, because I'm trying to figure out a creative organized way for y'all to find old videos. So like for Jerrica, who's just joining and like, as we all add people, I want us to be able to be like, Ashley rocks, Instagram, go to the YouTube channel, find Ashley's Instagram talk. But anytime we have a talk on anything, I want to have a very easy place for everyone to go to just get a couple of tidbits off of, of a call that pertains to whatever subject it is that they're wanting. And sometimes people will just sit there and just veg watch videos <laughs> just to learn and to, you know, and I think that's a great thing to do too. Um, but do y'all know anything about that? Do you know if you can archive videos on YouTube? I've never hosted a, I have no idea. Okay. Um, I'm going to look into it because I feel like now that we've combined, we're combining the teams with Amber. Um, I just want to, basically, I think I'm going to do a file that just says for all the team calls, click here. I'm not going to like list a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, who knows? Maybe one day I'll have a whole bunch of time and I can like individually post them all. But I feel like what I'm going to do is just have one post. That way, if someone's clicking through there, they can just see past team call videos. And then all you have to do is click on the YouTube, the main YouTube link, and it'll just take you to this. I'm hoping a, a, fi a um, archived section um, because on my YouTube channel, I have workout videos. I have our team calls. I have a bunch of stuff on there. And so I don't want it to be confusing for someone who goes on and then their five minute time frame is gone. <laughs> um, so, um, okay. So yeah, so basically that is it. Um, we, Ashley, thank you so much. I did take notes um, on here, but you were very, it was simple and you were very specific on what you are doing. And so I appreciate that. Um, a few things that I took away was it took me a really long time to um, understand that you, when you're creating your bio and you're wanting those few little like images and make it simple to go over and po do it in your notes section. I feel like that is a huge thing because I, I mean, I, I remember sitting there for like hours trying to get it to look right and it was never going to look right if I used Instagram. But yeah. if I, you go over to your notes section, you type out what you want your bio to look like, even emojis and everything. Um, I mean, you can do some really fancy stuff with it, create all kinds of fanciness. It's the same with posts too. Like Instagram likes to combine it all into a paragraph. So if you type whatever you're trying to say, and space it out how you want to on a note section and then copy and paste it to Instagram, it'll give you that space because people won't, don't, aren't attracted to like paragraphs of stuff. Mm -hmm. They won't read it. It has to be kind of spaced out so that they can just see what they want to see. Yeah. And that's, that's so true. I forget. And that's how I actually do all my posts on Facebook as I make sure I have spaces because you're right. If it looks like it's too much to read, nobody will read it. But if it's broken up, into a few sentences each. I definitely have, since I started doing that, I have a lot of people, a lot more people that will comment um, or even send me a message and just say, I just read through your posts. Like, thank you for sharing or whatever. Um, so that's a great one. And then um, I love the Google form. Um, and I, this is actually the same thing as Facebook. So if you, even just on your personal page, you don't have to do this on a business page, but when you do a cover photo, it's the same thing. Like your Instagram bio, you can put a form in there for everyone to fill out. Because like Ashley said, I mean, you know, that's how I think all of us are. We're a little intimidated or a little like shy, a little unsure. And all of a sudden one day you get this overwhelming feeling of like, okay, I remember that girl and I love what she's doing. I need that and I'm going to do it like now. And they just need a place to go. And so you can put a form in there. And I love what you did though, Ashley. This is a different form that I'm used to, but you give them options. So you say, thank you so much for um, wanting to connect how can I serve you? And you can literally tell them, do you want to know more about coaching? Do you want to know, know more about my challenge group? Do you want to know more about like, what are you wanting? Do you want to lose weight? Do you, you can give them options and then 
it's going to send her. So hers, she's saying Wufu. I use Google Forms. Super simple, both of them. But Google, I feel like I just do everything on Google. So Google Forms, you can create a simple form. Um, and I have been doing that and attaching it to some of my Facebook posts, especially if I'm um, advertising for a challenge group. That way, for those who are scared half to death or they all of a sudden are like, I'm ready. And then they know that they can go back and they can find that little link and then they just click on the link and they can fill it out. Um, Google, is there, like, I use Jot form, but mm -hmm. you can only have five submissions, like five different forms. Does Google give you unlimited or is unlimited. it unlimited? Unlimited, you can add photos, you can add, um, give them drop downs, give them like, Oh my gosh, I feel like there's an endless amount of things you can do on the Google. Um, you should check it out. It's really awesome. I can actually send you a link to one of mine. And that's what if you, and I'm just going to put this out there for whoever li re listens to the call too. If you're having trouble with what your form should look like, what kind of questions you need to ask, post it in our team page and say, I'm about to create a form to put on Facebook or Instagram can y'all share your links so that I can see what yours looks like. Um, the biggest thing is, is when you open that up, if you already are on your computer, well, no, you can't do that. Um, yeah, just don't copy and paste anyone else's link <laughs> because I've had that before where I had someone copy my link and then all of a sudden I had like two or three people on there that I was like, Okay, which a lot of them I don't know anyways, and that's the whole point. But when I went to their Facebook page, there were some people in common, and I was like, oh, goodness, I think something went wrong. And what happened was is this she just shared my link to a few people. And so um, just be careful with that. But I would be glad to any forms that I have, I would be glad to post them. And I know all, any of the other ladies would too, just so you have an idea how to even get started. Because I know for me, I'm pretty darn creative, but sometimes I get myself so overwhelmed with just starting that I just need something to look at so I can just write out my own notes and then I can go and create my own form. So always remember if you're looking for something or there's anything that you're like, I just don't even know how to start post it to our team page. That's exactly where that's what that's for. And that way we can just load you up with um, some examples and stuff. Um, great question. Let me just make sure um, there's any other, I love, okay, finding people. I love that one. That's, a, that's the key really, because that's where you find your people is you have to go to your niche. Um, so Ashley is like the prime. I love you as an example, because I feel like you're set apart from like us, like when we have preschool moms, that's, that's like a, I mean, everyone I feel like I know is a preschool mom. And so that's not a niche. It really isn't as much as we want it to be. It's not a niche. Even boy mom is still not a niche because it's too big. It's too big. Now, do you need to, do I need to put boy mom on my thing? Yes, because that way when someone sees my profile, they're like, oh, boy mom. But if you, you got to keep narrowing it down, narrowing it down, narrowing it down um, to very, very specific, like Ashley was saying, nurse, anything that you are, you pick four to five things and that's all you post about. You can randomly throw in a few things here and there, but it needs to be so consistent that like she said, when someone goes over to your page, there's no confusion. You said you were a nurse. You said you were a boxer mom. You said you liked, um, you're an aunt. You said you like whatever it is that you proclaim to like and be about Jesus. Well, they, they better like take two scrolls and it better be very visible because they're just going to leave if they don't find those things. Uh, and then I okay. forgot to say, don't tell people what you're doing. Mm -mm. Do not show them the T25 DVD. Do not tell them what you are doing. Don't, don't make them ask you. This is the best thing for me is I will say, oh my God, this 25 minute workout kicked my butt. And they'll see the video of me doing it. And in the comments, they'll be like, what workout are you doing? And I'll be like, I'll reply, I'll say, hey, I'm streaming. Well, it just depends on the day. I'm streaming. I do a lot of different And um, tell them, be, ask them if they want more information about what I'm doing. So even when people ask me, because um, I know I have a lot of people that peep but never like or whatever. Even when they ask me what I'm doing, I still keep it very general for the public. And then I privately message them and say, hey, girl, thanks so much for asking about what I'm doing. I stream my workouts. I love it. Can I send you more information about it? It's really awesome.
And you just have to say, yeah, yeah, what, you, what you're doing is great. So don't tell people what you're doing because they'll just go Google Beachbody. They'll go Google T25. They'll order it. And then they'll message you and be like, hey, I'm doing T25. Can I join your group? <laughs> After they've basically handed their money to. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So what I forgot what Shalene calls it. I can't even think of what the mark. Oh, yeah. She had a fancy word for it, but question marketing or um, um, interest. Yeah, it was at Summit. We she talked about it. Ah, it was a good but yeah, workout. curiosity, like curiosity yeah. marketing. Curiosity marketing. You call it workout. You call it a circuit. You call it whatever. But you try not to tell them what specifically you are doing. Make them ask for it. Yeah. So when they message you, like say you did that, and you say things. Let me send you more information. Like what do you? information you give them without saying it's speech body so usually i'll i'll thank them for it and then i'll ask i'll try to get to know them a little bit before i just bam say this is beach body let me give you my site um mm -hmm. but i have a email that chenille has an email as well i've kind of changed it up to more it's more of my style but the email basically has me talking about what beach body on demand is about what they get in the all access challenge pack um it's just a, a quick reference to what all i'm doing mm -hmm. and then in the end i tell them you know um let me know if you're interested i'd love to have you in the next group um and i will follow up with them because a lot of times people will not <laughs> As much as we like them to, they sometimes will forget to go to your email. Your email may go to spam. So a few days later, after I've sent the email, I always follow up with them and I say, hey, did you get a chance to review the email? What did you think? Do you have any questions? Um, so to answer your question, I will usually tell them I'm streaming workouts. I really love like not having to drive to the gym. Um, I can totally send you more information. And then I email them similar to what Chanel has. She could probably tag you in her. Mm -hmm. uh, email. I just sent you, I just added you on Jerrica. You should actually oh. get an email from me because we didn't even go through that process. Yeah. Um, that's like a whole nother. Yeah. That's yeah. A whole it's a whole, yeah, it's a whole nother topic. Um, but yeah, I, and I sent it to you just so you have it, but it's the same what Ashley, we have a system, basically a super, super simple system. So we don't even think literally, I don't even have to think you just have a specific email that you copy and paste. I have a system that I put mine in and I register everyone into that system, but that's something definitely, it's still very simple. I can promise you there, there's not a darn thing that I'm doing. That's not like click button simple because I cannot handle complex, but it would take time and I can, I can show you exactly how to do that. But that's part of learning what we do and I will show you that stuff. But um, basically when they ask, they're the same thing as Ashley said, I just say, um, thank you so much for your interest in it. And then I tell them like why I love it, why it's perfect for hurt them. And you can use like, I know you have small kids like me, or I know that you only have a small amount of time like me. You personalize it to that person. And then and you say, um, there's so many options to choose from. Can I have your email and I will send you the details. And then I do the same thing. And they, everyone gets the same email, every one of them. Um, and I even have it set up now where they get three emails from me. So they get the first email and then about seven days later, I give them a follow-up email and sometimes I'll include a recipe and then just say, I'm thinking about you. I know you haven't signed up yet. Do you have any other questions? Um, and then I'll do one more, a third email before like the challenge group would start or whatever. Um, so there's so many ways to do it, but you don't need to know it all. I think that is the biggest thing that to take away from all of that is you're not expected to know you. I have been doing this so stinking long. I literally have done every single program probably more than one time. So I can tell you what would be good for somebody else. I can help you figure out what other people need. We all can as a team, if you can't get a hold of me or whatever, that's another thing you can post in the group. Um, but that kind of stuff, you can't go wrong because Beachbody On Demand has every single thing you need. And so if someone's saying, okay, I heard about the 21 day fix, or you may even get a message that says, okay, girl, I got the 21 day fix. Can I join you in your group? then you can say, yes, like you can. These are just a couple of steps that you, we need to go through. I need to get you switched over to me as your coach. 
Um, but you don't, we're coaching them. We're not fitness or nutrition experts. And for the longest time in the beginning of my coaching journey, I felt like I needed to be an expert because I was a nurse practitioner and I was an expert. <laughs> and so I felt like I needed to be in this coaching world. And although we do need to be knowledgeable, we do not need to be experts. We're their friend and we are there to hold them accountable when you need to do that. But, um, don't even stress about those things. And you also have to fail. You have to like send a bunch of wrong messages yeah. to people <laughs> because we talk about this every once in a while. We're like, okay, two years ago, let's pull up some of these messages that we used to send to people. And we're like, oh my gosh, that was the worst thing ever. No wonder nobody said yes. Um, so it's just trial and error and like just knowing that we're all real people and we're really just here to partner with others to help them. And I think with what you said, Ashley, like just getting to know them and just saying, I'm just here to help, like, and leave it at that. Like, I'm just here to help. It's, I've had people say like, I, I don't have time. You can send me info. And I will usually just like message them and say, oh no, no, this isn't about me. I'm just here to help you. And so it's okay if you don't have time right now, but I'm, I'm just here to help. Um, and sometimes that will actually change the tone of the whole conversation when they're like, okay, maybe she really does care and she's not just trying to sell me something. Um, so, but that stuff takes time. So. Okay. Um, I was going to say one more thing. Um, I tell everybody this and y'all you know, Ashley like took to this and is amazing at it. But I feel like one thing that we as Jesus girls can be known for on social media is positive spiritual, um, encouragement. I mean, if we do anything, that's what we can do. Even if we don't post about our fitness journey or our nutrition, if all we post about is shine the light of Jesus, we've done our due diligence as a coach, in my opinion, um, because that's really what this opportunity is about. It's about partnering so that we can help others shine their light and become better. Um, and so I always tell everyone, if you can start posting a snippet of your Jesus time, reading your book, your scripture, whatever. And you guys know, cause y'all follow me. Like it's on there every day. That is part of my morning routine. I'm going to be putting up a quote, a scripture, a picture with a scripture, something that reflects what I did already this morning for myself in hopes that it will bring light to somebody else. And so if you do anything at all with your coaching stuff in the beginning, just be the light. Don't tell anyone you're working out. Don't tell anyone you're doing 21 to fix. Don't tell anyone you're doing any of these things other than like, of course, um, I know Jerrica, you posted a picture of your like meal prep. Amazing. The, the angle, the picture, plain, simple. It made me curious of like, Oh, I love eggs. I love breakfast. What the heck is she cooking? Like that's it. And then these little glimpses of Jesus and like how your mind and your heart is changing. That's it. Like that's really if anything, as long as you're doing something like that every day, you're shining light and you're doing exactly what um, we all need to be doing anyways, aside from Beachbody. Like that's what we need to be doing as Christian women anyways. So um, start posting some quotes and some encouragement because there are so many people. I was going to ask you, because like I did the Jesus Calling and I don't want to like go through it again because I already went through it kind of thing. But like yeah. are there any devotions like for women or anything that you would recommend? So, yes. So I definitely, Jesus Calling was one, but I, the same way, I actually just started this one. It's for the dreamer and the doer. Yeah, it's a really good one. And it is a really good one. And it's only 30 days. So I will be picking up with something else. I, I'm almost 100% sure the next one that I'm going to do is The Confident Woman by Joyce Myers. She's got one too. She's got a devotion. And I can't remember if that one is a full year or if it's just... I can't remember, but I know I was going to get it with a coupon from Michael's, but um, Amazon, whatever. But yeah, so this one was not very expensive and I'm on day, basically I'm following it on day um, two since it's the second. Um, but it's perfect because it has scriptures in it. It has quotes in it and you literally can just share the scripture that meant the most to you. You don't even have to use a fancy app. If you wanted to use an app, to create a quote like what I do or what Ashley does. Um, we love pick collage or word swag. 
word swag is probably my favorite. Um, but you can't layer on word swag. And I like to layer. I get too crazy some mornings. I'm like, Chanel, just put the stinking phone down. Um, but pick collage, you can layer and it's, it's great. Um, so if you wanted to be fancy and just like put that scripture on a fancy background, I would say, keep it simple. Like Ashley and I like white with color because it's more, um, I don't know it to me, it seems clean and well thought out versus like a crazy background with some words. I don't know if you, if, but you're a photographer, so you totally get it. <laughs> totally get it. And you're amazing on, um, what is it? Photoshop. Oh my gosh. That's I was like her. five minutes. I was, but I feel bad because like, I didn't know really what she wanted and I just played with it. Oh, it was amazing. Amazing. So no, so you know exactly what we're talking about. You could even go through and create a whole week's worth of posts. So all you got to do is just like post it every morning that goes along with whatever you're reading. Um, so anyway, so that's just a little example of, um, those are great, great questions. But I think that's it. Everything else, perfect. Um, Everything Ashley talked about is totally applies to us on Facebook. So you don't have to go run and get an Instagram. I would say though, if you are contemplating getting an Instagram, it needs to be business related um, because Instagram is based on business model. And so it's not going to be effective if you do it for personal use. And I know that sounds I weird. I have an Instagram, so would I just create a separate one? For yes. Business? Okay. Yes. Um, yes, you would. I mean, some people just stop where they're at and then just change it over, like change over the words and everything. And that way for anyone who's been following him. But what I feel like I have found is once you make over that switch, you're going to have disinterested followers because they were only interested in social connection versus like a personal connection versus business. But the way we run our business is very social. It's not salesy anyway. So it's really whatever you would feel comfortable doing. Um, I think, honestly, you could use your current one if you just shifted your mind towards, okay, I'm going to do a quote. I'm going to do this. Um, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Because Ashley is rocking it. And Instagram is a, I mean, an, I feel like a super easy way to make new friends. And Facebook is a little overwhelming. Um, and how you're going to grow a business is to make new friends, just like with photography and any other business, you got to get your name out there and you got to make connections. Otherwise, same old people who maybe support you one time, where are you going to get your other people? Um, so I think that's something you may should pray over and just say, okay, do I want to use Instagram and run with it? Or do I want to just use my personal page for now? Um, I don't ever want to add anything to anyone's plate. So if you can simplify it in the beginning and think that's the best thing to do. Great, great questions. Um, I think that's it. I know that Ashley um, has to run. So I don't want to keep anybody any longer, but thank you so much, Jer for, Jerica, for jumping on. I know I don't ever want to overwhelm people, but the honest truth is it's kind of overwhelming just because even for me, sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, should I start doing an Instagram again? Like it just makes me a little all over the place too. So it's okay to feel that way. Um, I'm just going to do one thing at a time. And right now just focus on my devotions. And, you know, so I think Perfect. That's the, always the best place to start because he's going to help you get to the next step. I feel like when you leave him out, the next step's even harder. So you're doing perfect. Um, perfect. So, okay, y'all. Well, I'm going to go get off so that we can um, let everyone carry on their day. And um, I'm here. Y'all know I'm here for anything, even if it's just to talk. Um, Ashley has been my ear to talk to. I don't know how many times. So I always want to make myself available for anybody else who just needs to like, just get the frustration out. <laughs> oh, real, real quick. Um, the, the book that came with the portion control, do you suggest we fill all that out as far as like, um, my calorie count, my calorie intake? It has like um, a formula at the beginning of the, the book. The yes. Um, it, I definitely would do that in the beginning um, because it's going to help you pick your bracket um, and it's going to keep you from counting calories. And I'm, I, I'm a big like anti-calorie counter only because I have such a negative thing up here with it. And so the, the portion control doing it that way, it literally gives you such a great big range. And so I think you'll find that it's a little less stressful to just go ahead and calculate it Go ahead and um, in your mind for the first at least week, 
use those containers and be like, okay, it's telling me I'm supposed to have this much for lunch because sometimes I feel like we don't eat as much as we're allowed to eat. I don't eat a lot in general, and that's going to be hard for me because I don't eat a lot. Yeah, and so it'll be good to help you know that it's for weight loss so that your body doesn't hold on to that fat to go ahead and eat a little bit more maybe. Um, but also, I feel like the really big reason for us who are coaches and actually want to help people is that you just go through the process just like you would because that way you can tell other people, okay, this is what I did when I first started. I just got out that book. I wrote out my stuff. I followed that. And then now I know, okay, I'm supposed to be eating this. And so you're a little more mindful. And that's what I do. I just am kind of mindful of my portions. Um, if I'm traveling or when I was going into the clinic and working, oh, those portion control containers went everywhere with me because I, that way I didn't have to think. I'm like, I just prepared it in those containers. Um, so very good question. That's what I would start with. Okay. Yeah. Cause my husband's like, Oh, you got to count calories. I'm like, I don't want to count calories. This is not why I did this. And he was like, just do the formula. You don't have to count calories. And I didn't really look at it, but he was trying to encourage me, but I was like, I don't want to count calories. <laughs> nope. You don't. And I'm the same way, girl. I am. I am. I just cannot handle a lot of that. Some, some months I'm more motivated to be more particular, but for the most part, I just like, Nope. I just know I need to be having four greens or three greens, two purples. And I just kind of know, and I'll write that usually on my plan for the week. And so I'm mindful of it, but that's really it. It's just a, it's a more, um, I don't know, forgiving liberal way of, of living. Um, it's kind of how I look at it, but it is still, you still have to stay within those terms, but I think you'll find that it's really, it's actually a pretty good system. All right, I that. and then real quick, just because I have you, yeah, like, I'm doing the seven day cleanse. But after that, do you guys just pull?